You know, I uh, I was listening to some talk radio, a Christian talk radio, and uh, they were talking about a lot of different subjects and elements that are affecting our world right under our nose. Number one, they were talking about New World Order, and they were talking about it includes, you know, uh, all governments and one government, one world government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's being set up under our noses. Yes, it is. Amen. Yeah. But we're so busy having a church, we don't yeah. see it. Amen. Um, they are trying to pass some legislation um, that would uh, bring about gender equality. Ain't nothing wrong with gender equality. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But the way they're pushing it takes it too far. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and, and even so far that even from a religious spec perspective, you don't have any right. right. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. So now they're encroaching upon what I believe in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. So, uh, I mean, church, we need to take out a spiritual Q-tip yes. uh -huh. so that we can hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Amen. We need to clean our eyes so we can see what's really going on. Amen. 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 And I ain't getting ready to preach about that. I just shared that. I, I, I found it interesting. I found myself suspended in those thoughts as to what's going on under our noses in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But this morning, we are very grateful in Jesus' name to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, God has been good to us. We're very grateful uh, to these musicians and Levites in Jesus' name, Amen. to the praise singers in Jesus' name, to the ministers, to, to the Sunday school teachers, to the ushers in Jesus' name. And like somebody said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, amen, than to dwell in the tents of ways. Somebody said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. Amen. We bless God this morning. We do. Amen. Because he is good. To all our lovely visitors, we just wave your hand if you're a visitor. And uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to get to you in Jesus' name. Well, let me do it now. Let me tell you. Amen. 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 Let me do it now because I don't know what we're going to do. Handsome young man in the salmon shirt. It ain't really pink. It's kind of salmon. <laughs> you, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. All right, Prophet Daniel. Who's the young man with you? Uh, this is my daughter, Jamila. Jamila? Yeah. Jamila? Yeah. Uh huh. And it's Carson and Kyrie. Carson and Kyrie? Yeah. All right. All right. Bless the Lord for you. Let's go. Oh, Praise the Lord. Shamia, amen. God bless you, Shamia, in Jesus' name. Amen. Visitor with Parsa. Mm -hmm. Well, bless the Lord, in Jesus' name. We're glad to have you. You ain't no visitor, but good to see you again. Amen. Good to see you. She's getting her praise on today, y'all. She's gone amen. for a minute. Amen. amen. Bless the Lord for you. Uh, handsome gentleman in the blue, amen. Uh, the French blue and navy blue combination. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Where are the Downs? Alton. Okay, Elton Jackson. Yeah. Elton Jackson. Elton Jackson. Jules okay. brother. Okay, Jules brother. All right. Bless the Lord. And I told I told Jules, I said, you, you know I like her. Yeah, y'all know I got a aunt named Jules. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. I, I, I told her that, so we hope you. And we and look at Janice just back there. Amen. 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 She bust out her cool today. Amen. Amen, Janice. Yes, ma'am, Jewel. I would like to say that I thank my nephew and niece for inviting me here. Amen. You know, because we was at home 
don't have in church. Amen. And um, when he told us about this church, you know, and he sent me a video on my phone, and I just <laughs> began to rejoice Amen. in the Lord, and I said, honey, I got to come. <laughs>
God is showing me something. And I'm, I may be behind the curve, but he's, he's showing me the importance of it. How many tech-savvy people do we have? Somewhat tech-savvy. You know how to use technology. You know how to, you know how to send a text. I ain't text savvy. You know, y'all text me. Y'all be having faces on your emojis. You get all that stuff. I just put hello and took me right God is dropping in my spirit that we need to start using technology a little bit more to get to the next level. Amen. So if I'm not tech savvy and you said you were, that means you need to help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I had a disturbing dream about my old church uh, uh, this week. I shared it with the saints. I shared it with a couple of the saints. Uh, the dream was disturbing because in one building was all of the dead bishops who had pastored the church before. In one building was the bishop who is the pastor now. He was the only one in that building. He was living. All of these over here were dead. And they were complaining. The one last pastor that was dead was complaining. And the pastor that was in the position now, in my dream, he was not in his right frame of mind. As if he had gotten older and developed, you know, a little bit of mental challenges. But anyway, uh, as the dream continued, I was supposed to minister at the church. And they were telling me to minister from down here at this low place. And I saw a pulpit at the top. I said, no, I'm going up there. And they were saying, no, don't go up there. I said, I'm going up there. And I had to go up there on the outside of the building. I had to climb the, the top of the building and it was ice and snow and it was cold and the Lord has given me revelation of what that re represents. That's the nature of people. Amen. Amen, that's what people are. But when I finally got to the top and I started to tell the saints to praise God, I'm talking about the church erupted, the saints began to praise God, but it wasn't just the saints that was there, it was the saints of the ages. Amen. Amen. I could see saints that was dead and saints that was living. Amen. 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 And they just began to praise God. And I recognized when I got up there, because of the climb, I didn't have a Bible. Amen. And I started to get a little nervous. But then I pulled out my phone. Amen. Amen. And I started reading scripture from the phone. Amen. Amen. Just like y'all do today. Wow. And so what the Lord was letting me see, technology plays a role. And even Brother Larry, the tape that you gave me last week, I listened to the tape. And, and the young man, remember he said, y'all pull out your phones? Yes. Amen. He didn't say pull out your Bible because he knew everybody had a Bible on their phone. That's right. Amen. Okay. And so while we are limited in what we're doing because we may not be tapping into technology. We can tap into technology and technology can take us to the next dimension. Amen. I can go outside and put a flyer on the pole and hopefully five, six people will ride past and stop and see that flyer. But you can do a post on your Instagram. That's right. That's right. And people in Louisiana trying to come up here next week because they've seen what you posted on Instagram. That's right. Hello? Amen. So go with me in Jesus' name. Help me do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't put no crazy stuff. Don't post, don't post nothing crazy. If you a cursor, you would just still smoke blunts and weed. I am not your pastor. Amen. <laughs> I believe in holistic living. Amen. Hello? Amen. You might have an issue, but you can't stay there. Amen. Come in here with your issues, but you can't stay there. Amen. Amen. Because what? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's a new condition. Old things are passed away. And what will we? Behold, all things become new. Tell somebody, God want to do some new stuff for you. Come on, tell somebody, tell them, God want to do some new stuff for you. It don't matter where you've been. It don't matter what you've been through. Amen. That's your past. Oh, my God. I want to bring you to your future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, uh, 
places that I used to go. Well, I don't go there no more. Oh, what a wonderful change in my life since what? Since grace found me. Amen. Let's let's move. Let's get into the Word of God. So this morning, I'm going to share something with you uh, that I hope blesses you as much as it blessed me as I was ruminating over it. Um, I'm not the preacher who preaches just to tickle your emotions or to make you feel good. There's going to be those days. I want to see change. Amen. Amen. I want to see growth. Amen. I want to see maturity. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to see your nature change. And sometimes in order for your nature to change, we got to change your psyche. Because nature only do what you think. Y'all ain't like saying that. Amen. Hello? And sometimes, so we're going to mess with some of y'all minds sometimes. Amen. And some, some people need their mind messed with. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hello? Amen. Amen. We're going to renew your mind. And the kind of says we're going to renovate how you think. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And if we renovate how, how you think, you'll feel different. Amen. And when you feel different, you choose different. Amen. Amen. And when you choose different, you get different results. Amen. 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 So it's a lasting change. Amen. Man, but if you keep feeling the same way, you keep choosing the same thing, ain't that insanity? Yeah. To expect a different result. You still do that stuck on stupid stuff. Whooping the stupid tree. Act <laughs> like you got branches on that tree. Alright, let's, let's move. Let's move. Yeah, we're going to pray for Mark chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 17, 17 through 20. If you don't have a physical Bible, use your cell phone. If you don't have a cell phone, check the screen out. But let me tell you something. You need to hide the word in your heart. Amen. Amen. So if your battery and your cell phone go dead, you still got some work. If this computer crashed because it's got a bug, you still got some work. Amen. 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 You need to hold on to one of them physical Bibles yeah. because you know there is going to come a famine in the land yeah. and the famine is going to be for the word of God. Yeah. It ain't going to be for burgers and fries. Amen. It's, it's going to be for the word. Amen. Amen. So Mark 16, and this is just a, a foundational scripture and I'm going to jump some fences. These signs Greek word here is Simeon. Shall follow them that believe. If you are a believer, there ought to be some external manifestation that validates what you believe. Amen. Hello? Amen. Now, three people just said amen. amen. I'm going to say that again. If you are a believer, there ought to be some external manifestations that validate what you believe. Amen. Amen. In my name, not your name, not the bishop's name, not your pastor's name, not the prophet's name, not the evangelist's name, but in the name that's above every name. Hello. They shall cast out devils. Oh my God. Tell somebody some some stuff need to be cast out. Some stuff need to be cast out. Some, some be cast out. You trying to talk it out, you trying to figure it out. Some stuff, what's the Greek word? Ekbalo. Amen. Come on, Bridget. Say it. Ekbalo. Means it needs to get out. Some stuff need to be cast out. Amen. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with what? New tongues. New tongues, not talk tongues. Hello? Yes. Hello? Not common church tongues. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. New tongue. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, what's going to happen? They shall not hurt them. 
Oh my God, touch somebody. Lay, so lay hands on the sick, just touch somebody. Lay hands just touch somebody. Sick. Just touch somebody. Yeah. Speak to their sickness. I don't care yeah. what it is. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed. Be healed emotionally. Be healed psychologically. Be healed spiritually. Oh my God, I'm starting to feel the whole thing. Be healed. Be healed. Hallelujah. Be healed. Hallelujah. Be healed. Hallelujah. told them y'all gonna get a do with power y'all gonna get power after y'all get power these Amen. signs is gonna follow y'all Amen. 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 Amen and then he went back up to heaven and then what does it say? Set the right hand of God. Uh -huh. Come on and, forth. and tell somebody go forth go forth, oh, go forth. oh you've been waiting and debating you've been trying to figure it out God has opened the door go forth Amen. You've been trying to amen, figure out which way to go. Just go for it. You ain't got to know all the ways. Why? Because the steps of a good man is ordered. As you start walking, God is going to lead you. As you start walking, he's going to show you the way. As you start walking, he's going to open the door before you. Go for it. Preach everywhere. They went for it. They preached everywhere. And what? Oh my God, I like that. Somebody say, work with me, Lord. Work, 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 work with me. Work with what I got. Work with what I have. Work with me, God. Working with them. And what did he do? He confirmed the word with signs followed. I ain't chasing signs. They're chasing me. They're following me. I ain't following the signs. They're following me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And then what to say? Amen. It must be so be. Amen. So be. What I'm going to talk to you about this morning is residual glory. Yes. Amen. Tell somebody I want residual glory. I want residual glory. I want residual glory. I want somebody to say, what is that? Yes. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Whenever we hear residual, especially in our modern society, nine times out of ten, residual is used connected to income. Because we want residual income. And I, I, I watched a fellow the other day, his name is Grant Cardone. He is a master salesman. And uh, he's written books and did videos and training courses. And he's a multi-billionaire. I mean, he, you know, uh, he's pretty arrogant. He can't be. But he can back up what he's saying. Amen. That makes the difference. You know what I mean? And he was telling, he was speaking to the younger generation of football players and rappers, and he was saying, yeah, you got money, and yeah, you're a millionaire now. He said, but don't be stupid. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was telling them, 
Don't use the money you work for to buy stuff. He says, use the money you work for to invest and then buy stuff with your residual income. Yeah, amen. Amen. He was, he was teaching them an investment principle. Yeah. And I would say, you're telling the truth, friend. Amen. You're telling the truth. Mm -hmm. That's where we all want to get to the place of residual income, yeah. where we have income that's left over, income that returns, and income that shows up even though I didn't have to do anything else for it. Amen. Amen. Well. amen. amen. So, amen. Amen. amen, amen, amen. So, residual, it is a reminder. It is, it is, it is excuse me, a residual. Something left over. It is a residual product or residual substance. It's something that's left over, something that reoccurs. And I love this, 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 this definition. An internal after effect of experience or activity that influences later behavior. Which means that you have an experience that affects you so much that it affects your later behavior mm -hmm. and brings about later results. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody I want some residual glory. I want some residual glory. So, amen. Let me move. Let me move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. So, as I begin to look at this, what the Lord was teaching his disciples in Mark is that y'all are going to be my residual. I'm going to move out the way and get out the way and I'm going to go back to glory. And what I did, I want y'all to do. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The effect that I had on the world, I want y'all to have on the world. Are y'all listening to me? He says what? Why I'm in the world? I am the light of the world. Is that what he called himself? But remember, when he got ready to leave, he said what? You are the light of the world. So he wants you to have a, a residual glow on you, a residual presence. Listen to this. He says that you are the salt of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that you ought to give the world some flavor. You, you ought to preserve the world because isn't that what salt does? Yeah. It gives you flavor. Yeah. It preserves stuff. But it also produces thirst as well. Yeah. Hello? Is anybody going to serve the same God you yeah. serve yeah. after they taste and seen of God's glory in you. Hello, there ought to be some residual. There ought to be some residual on you. And, and, and you cannot have residual if you have not been affected by him. If you're not connected to him. See, a whole lot of people want to go to church, but a whole lot of people ain't connected to the Lord. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It's a whole lot of people saying hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. They don't know Jesus if he walked in here and slapped them on the back of their head. They wouldn't know that it was him. If Jesus showed up today, they could not identify that it was his presence, that it was his glory, that it was his amen, and that his power that is moving. And that's what's bad is, is because the church, and the modern church has built steeples, and the modern church has built Couldn't sleep. Right. And one morning, 
I fell on my face and I was praying. And I said, God, I said, let your glory rest on me. Yes. So that when I encounter people, they see your glow. And not mine. And I got up and they went on and Sister Bell was trying to make me walk out and feel like oh. <laughs> Sister Bell got me in, Bella, my grandbaby in. She like, we gonna walk. We walked three houses, it got to rain, and I said, we ain't walking. <laughs> <laughs> but I ran into my neighbor, and his wife came out the house, and he said, Tim, what's going on? How are you? And I told him. And she got to talk about my next neighbor. They said, he called himself a minister. I said, oh, I didn't know that. I've been living over here quite a while. I didn't know he was a preacher. She said, that's what he called himself. <laughs> <laughs> and her husband was telling her, be good, be good. And I could tell she was going to come on cow. Because <laughs> she said it about three times. He said, that's what he said, Tim. And I was going to leave, and she said, but you know what, Tim? I said, what? He said, she said, uh, he ain't like you. I said, what do you mean? She said, you got that glove. Right. Right. I said, thank you, Jesus. Because I had just prayed that. Amen. I had prayed that that glow be on me, that that, that after glow, that residue glory, that it rest on me. And that's what you, can I tell you this, sisters? The afterglow will do you better than all of Olay. Yeah. You going to need to walk, I need some Mac, you know, you know. You know, y'all gotta have some Mac throw, you know, press powder, y'all gotta make sure. It ain't the right color. The glow, amen, the glow will adapt to your color. Did you hear me? The glow will, if you're lighter, oh my God, it'll make you rosy. If you're dark, it'll put that seven eyes shining. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It'll adapt to whatever you are. Let's move, let's move, let's move. So, so how do I get this glow? Let me take you somewhere in Jesus' name. So, uh, uh, one of the things you got to understand, this is not external. Mm -hmm. It's something internal. Amen. Amen. And one of the things that's messed up, sometimes we try to change people from the outside in. Yes. Hello? Amen. But you can't change people from the outside in. Because if you change them from the outside in, you did not change their nature. You did not change the essence of who they are. And even though you watch them and you clink them up, they're going to be dirty in a little while. Because guess what? The pig is going to go back to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. Clean the pig up. Put Gucci on him. See what he's going to do. That's just going straight to the dirt. That's right. That's right. And you say, you got on Gucci. Don't do that. No. He like it. <laughs> you can't cast pearl before swine. That's right. That's right. You don't care. You don't care. His nature has not changed. Yes. So he's going back to what he knows. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that's why people need to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. People, amen. You need to be in a church that preaches about the Holy Ghost, that teaches about the Holy Ghost, that allows the Holy Ghost to move and do whatever needs to be done. Because if you don't, you quench in the Spirit. If you don't, you stop them to go. And the glow from heaven being made manifest in people's lives. Can I tell you this? The glory can take away smoke. Y'all ain't saying no. The glory, the anointing, amen, can take away. Oh my God, it can take it away. Oh God, I'm a witness. I can tell you that the glory can make you put it out. The glory, you'll never have to take another puff again. You'll never have to take another draw again. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Don't sit here and act like you ain't never smoked. Joel's bar. 
Hey, hello? Hello? The strongest thing you're going to get out of me is communion. I'd have been out the country. They said, tell me, don't drink with you. They take me to these places. Oh, we have, they have some of the best champagne in the world. No, they don't. Best champagne in the world at communion, man. Hello? Y'all ain't saying that to me. Hello, let me, let me move. How do I get this? So, I want you to understand something. God wants to affect you and your life Amen. so that there is an evident presence on you. Amen. Undeniable. He wants to affect you to the degree that when people believe you, they may not be able to identify what it is. They may not be able to articulate it the way you can. But there is a magnetism and an attraction that's on you that when they leave you, they anticipate running into you again. Amen. Are y'all saying something? Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. You know what's up for? We wish we don't never see them again. That's right. That's right. Tell the truth. Well, she got that bad spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, you tell the truth. Yeah. You know it's the people in yeah. Oh, some of your family members. Yeah. I, I hope that aunt don't never host Thanksgiving no more. We did not enjoy ourselves in our house. Can't nobody sit on the couch. What you buy a couch for if you don't want nobody to sit on? You know how some of y'all take your shoes off, take your shoes off. That's right. That's right. Hello? What you want a new car for? You ain't gonna pick up nobody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they go locked. I'm lucky, honey. Nobody ever sit on this seat. And ain't nobody ever gonna sit on it. <laughs> Some wrong. Some wrong. Get the car, open all the doors, anoint it, and say, God, use me to bring somebody to your glory. Use me to bring somebody out of darkness into this marvelous life. Let the spirit of hospitality be at my house on this couch so that when they sit down, they want to pray. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hello? I pray the hospitable spirit over my house. Big pocket. 
right? And uh, so when Eddie Lee was around us, we keep Eddie in front of us. That's right. and I, you think I'm kidding? Eddie used to practice taking a wallet out of the inside of the coat with a bell in the, in the coat pocket. And he would practice until the bell wouldn't ring. Because he knew if the bell didn't ring, he was smooth enough to get you. Amen. <laughs> well, he brought Eddie to church one day. We still was trying to keep space from Eddie. <laughs> but uh, Al come in, and you know, most of us that are sanctified now, when we come in, we going to bow and we going to pray just to acknowledge the presence of the Lord and thank him for being in this house. So Al kneeled down here to pray. And he pimped in. <laughs> See now, he won. <laughs> he won. <laughs> but every heart wouldn't change, y'all. Okay. Wow. Eddie was still trying to get by. I'm talking about close person. Yeah. Oh, you know how y'all church people get. Y'all just, oh, praise the Lord, person just open wallet up, bro. Put that stuff up. Because <laughs> she. I'm one of the ones as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Amen. Amen. I'm one of the ones that know I can walk on both sides of the street. Come you on. ain't gonna burn me. That's right. I'm with you. Amen. Amen. I, I got one with me. Amen. Let me move. Let me move. Let me move. I don't even know you, but I like you. Amen. 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 So Peter and John, they, they they're going to the house of prayer, and 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 one of these guys on the corner, he's there in front of the the temple, and he's begging alms. He wants money. He wants benevolence. He's playing on the people that are spiritual because they see him in his condition and they figure he figures they're going to give it to me. We got to learn something. I might not be able to meet your natural need, but I do have something that can affect your life. Hello, do I got a witness? Yeah. Yeah. So Peter and John told him, silver and gold have we not. But what did they say? They said, but such as we have, we give unto you. You got to start giving people what you got. You got to start sharing with people what the Lord has done for you, who the Lord is. You got to start giving them your faith. You got to start giving them your testimony. You got to start believing that God can raise them up. They laid hands on him. They said, silver and gold we ain't got. They say, but take up your bed and walk. Get up, man. And the man took his bed and got up. And the Bible said he went into the temple leaping and praising God. Yes, yes. Hello? And can I tell you this? Your cousin, amen, that they say can't never be free. If you tell them the truth about Jesus and Jesus start to free them, they'll come leaping in this sanctuary. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Your uncle, your brother, the one that they wrote off that they said ain't never going to be nobody. If you give them what you have, they'll come leaping in the sanctuary. They'll come giving God praise in this place. So, that's what they did. So, they got in trouble. And they wanted to know how is this man made whole. So, it was these guys. Now, when they saw the bonus of Peter and John, because Peter and John was telling everybody. Mm -hmm. And you need to start telling everybody. Amen. You know, sometimes God bless people and don't tell nobody. What? Mm. You better stand up and testify. Amen. The devil is saying, I want him to hear. Hallelujah. Hello? Amen. Well, you know, you know you put it out there that the enemy, listen, he's going to come. He's going to attack you anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. The enemy going to attack you anyway. Yeah. Put it out there. Stop sitting on what God has done. Yeah. Amen. 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 Stop trying to have that false pride. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. False humility. Excuse me. Yeah. Hello? Now, when Peter and they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were what? Uh -huh. Hold on, though. So, which means these men are not very schooled. They are not, per se, what we would call intelligent men. Hello? But this ain't about IQ. Hello? This is about who is in you. Amen. 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 Hello? This is about who is in you. This is Amen. not about IQ. Amen. Amen. So they perceived that they were unlearned, ignorant men, and what else? The Greek word for marvel is the mazu. They just stood there. They marvel. And they took knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
They fully understood epinosis knowledge. They fully understood. They began to grasp that what? That they have been with Jesus. Don't you want somebody to know that you've been with Jesus? Don't you want somebody to see that Jesus has been with you? Amen. Don't you want somebody to understand? Amen. Uh, it ain't just where I come from. It ain't my pedigree. It ain't none of that. It's who I know. It's who I've been with. And it's who's with me now. Let me move. Let me take you because I, I done messed up. I always mess up. Every Sunday I mess up. Be back next week. I mess up. Amen. And so let me take you somewhere really quick because when you start talking about residual glory, nobody embodies this better than Moses. Okay. Nobody embodies this or nobody brings an example of this <clears throat> to us out of the scripture better than Moses. So y'all know Moses in Jesus' name, just like some of us. Moses got an identity crisis, just like some of us, amen. amen, because he's been raised and told one thing, but that ain't how it is. Oh, my God, I can't go there right now. Amen. Jesus, I can't go there right now. Tell somebody that ain't how it is. That ain't how it is. That ain't, come on, wake up. Tell somebody else that ain't how it is. That ain't how it is. You ain't who they told you you were. Amen. 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 You don't come from where they told you we came from. Amen. That ain't even your name. Amen. Oh, God. I can't mess with y'all. So look at this. Moses, he has an experience, becomes a leader. God, God calls him to the backside of a mountain. Amen. God deprograms him of what he knows. Reprograms, of, reprograms him to who he is. Did you catch that? He deprograms him from what he knows. Yeah. But he reprograms him for who he is. Amen. 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 So God does that to him, Amen. prepares him. Amen. And it takes a little time. Now look at that. He out on the backside of what was it, 40 years? Yes. He, he, he out there 40 years. Lord have mercy. Some of them would have been really gave up. Now, he's brought the people out of bondage, he's brought them out of Egypt. They're on their way to the promised land, but. Just like they, people need new insight to govern their new life. Yes. Yes. They need to be taught yes. how to live a new way. Yes. Because if you don't teach them a new way to live, they're going to live the old way. Yes. So they've been in bondage for 400 years. They've been down in Egypt. They've been slaves. Their mentality is running. Yes. Amen. How they think is running. They got the mentality of a slave, not a leader. Amen. And he had to deprogram them. Amen. To reprogram, to live, to re reprogram them to live free. Yes. So he goes, gets them out, but then He's got to spend time with God. Mm -hmm. Number one, if you're going to get residual glory, oh, good good you got to spend time with God. Yeah, yeah. Good word. Cut Facebook off. Amen. Stop taking selfies and posting them. Amen. Get your Bible, go in the closet, get you some oil, close the door, and don't let him go until he bless your soul. Amen. Amen. You got to start. Tell somebody, don't look at me like I'm crazy. You got to start spending time with God. You got to start spending you time Tell somebody, you got to start spending time with God if you're going to get residual glory. If you want God's glory to rest on you, how you going to get it if you don't see it? The only way you're going to get it, you got to see it. Hello? Tell somebody, I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see, it. I want to see his hand on cover. I want to see him move in the hospital room. I want to see him break down doors that they said couldn't be opened. Oh, my God. My Bible said that he can open a door that can't be man shut. And if heaven is, is, if, is if heaven is strong and earth of his footstool, what size shoe do he wear? That was you. That was good. You know you can open a door. Yeah, yeah. They can't close it. <laughs> and if God put his foot in it, who's gonna close? Yeah. Hello? Nobody. Moses. He was there with the Lord. How long? 40 days. 40 days. Notice, you're going to have to be tried. Yeah. 40 
in the scripture always represents proving or trying. Moses is in the wilderness 40 years. He's with the Lord 40 days, 40 nights. Jesus was tempted 40 days, 40 nights. Elijah went in the strength on one meal 40 days, 40 nights. Hello? Amen. Sometimes God has to try you. He has to prove you. And in that 40, in that proving time, he wants to purge you, clean you out, purify you, so that what's left is killed. Amen. 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 Let's move, let's move, let's move. So he was there 40 days and 40 nights. I gotta hurry up. Y'all messing with me. And he did neither eat bread nor drink water. And, and oh, let me mess with y'all. I'm sorry. If you're gonna fast, fast the way they did in the Bible. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Some of y'all, wow, I'm just gonna eat this and we ain't gonna have that. I don't find that in the scripture. <laughs> When I look in the scripture and I look at the people who fed, baby, they went without food, they went without water. That's right. You eating chickpeas and <laughs> talking about you fasting. You, ain't fasting. Right. you just don't feed them, girl. Right. You ain't fasting. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> Y'all know it's a Daniel fast, people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to bust your bubble. I got issues with Daniel. All right. The fast, not him. <laughs> Talk about the Daniel fast, you know. I didn't eat no sweet bread, you know. You know. Y'all you know. just swear up and down while I'm fasting unto the Lord. No, you not. <laughs> Don't be a bad pastor. Okay, I done messed up some of my theology now. Nah. My daddy, my daddy told me how to tell you a fan. You ain't going to know I'm past this daddy. You know what I'm talking about? You won't play the dozen All right. He didn't need to eat bread or drink water. And he, come on, I got to move it. He wrote upon the ta tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Amen. So now they've been slain. He is now giving them laws that are going to govern how they live. Amen. 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 Come on, let's go. And it came to pass what? When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hands, when he came down from the mount, that Moses did not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. See, Moses didn't know he was gone. It ain't enough for you to know. Other people got to know. Did you catch that? He didn't know he was gone. But when he got talking to them folks, they start putting their hand over their eyes like, hold on, dude. He shining. That was residual blow. Guess what? He'd been in the presence of the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights, and he ain't had nothing to eat, so the only thing that's sustaining him is his spirituality. Yes. 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 Oh. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. Oh, my God. Have you ever been in a place where the only thing that got you through was your relationship with God? Yes. Have you ever been in a place where the only thing that brought you through is because you kept spending time with him? Yes. That was the thing that brought him through. Let me move real quick. They, he didn't know that he was shining. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone what? And they were afraid. Can I tell you this? When you really get anointed, people going to start being scared of you. When you really get anointed, people going to start, amen, they're going to be a little careful on what they say to you, how they deal with you, amen, what they do around you. Don't trip out because they don't want to do everything around you. It's the glow on you that's disturbing them. It's the glory on you that's affecting them. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Amen. I want people to be affected so that when I come around, they put their drink up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, come on, come on. Until Moses had done 
So he covered the glory up so that people could speak to him. Y'all better catch this. He covered the glory up so that the children of Israel could speak to him. Can I tell you, sometimes you can't always be obvious. Some of y'all didn't catch that. You can't always just talk Jesus all the time. Hello? Oh, but praise the Lord. Ain't he good? Yeah, he sure is. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Let them see that it ain't just what you say. Yeah. Let them see that there's something on the inside of you that speaks louder than what I can say. Yeah. Let them understand that there is an anointing that's in me, yeah. amen, that proceeds out of me yeah. that'll affect you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He covered it up. He took off all his Jesus shirts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hello? Uh -huh. You know, if people only know you saved because you got Jesus bumpers on your car and you the main one blowing at people. <laughs> Boy, if you don't take them things off the back of your car. <laughs> Hello? I can't stand folks that got bumper stickers on the back of their car that they ain't living up to. Right. Right. Hello? Oh, okay, okay. And Tim Moses had done people that he put a veil over his face. Now look at this. You got to understand something. It gets deeper. It gets deeper. Come on. Can I tell you, you can't cover yourself up when you go in before God. Can I tell you, you got to take off everything when you go before God. You can't cover up nothing, you can't hide nothing. Can I tell you this? Even when you do hide it, He still sees it. Hello? Even when you do it in the dark, you think God don't see? The Bible said that the darkness and the night is, I mean, the light and the day is just, uh, the night is the same to him. You can put on a black hoodie, go at night, 12 o'clock at night, you can go out, hang out, get your groove thing on, ain't nobody gonna see you. And to God, it's 12 in the afternoon. Because the eyes of the Lord is in every place. What? Holding all the good and the evil. Is that not true? Is that not true? But Moses took the veil off, amen, until he came out. And he came out and what? Spake with the children of Israel uh, that which he was commanded. All right, come on, let's go. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, and the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put a veil upon his face again and until he went to speak with him, until he went to speak back with God. Now, I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to finish. Let me show you something in Jesus' name. That that Moses saw he became. Mm. Mm. Who? Mm. Just like you. What you watch all the time. You're keeping up with Kardashians, ain't you? Amen. <laughs> Next thing you know, your name Kim. <laughs> Don't exaggerate. <laughs> you got my point. Whatever you pay attention to, unconsciously you start mimicking whatever you watch. It gets down into your inner spirit, into your inner man, and it becomes a part of your psyche. Hello. So if you want glory, won't you start looking at glory? If you want power, won't you start looking at power? Amen. And I'm talking about the right kind of power. I ain't talking about political power. I'm talking about spiritual power. Hello. If you want anointing, won't you start watching anointed people? Yes. Figure out what they're doing. Because yes. anointing ain't free, it costs. Oh, everybody want to be anointed, but everybody don't want to pay the cost. Sometimes it costs agony. Sometimes it costs pain. Sometimes it costs the loss of sleep. Yeah. While folks is snoring in the river running down the side of your face. Yeah. Hey Amen. You in there with a Bible on the floor, the yeah. as you read. Yeah. I'm talking about you looking up Greek. You praying. Yeah. Amen. I'm talking about you asking God, amen, to renew your spirit. Because yeah. anointing costs. Yeah. Residual glory. Let me move. Yeah. All right, now let me take you someplace. So we talked about Moses. We talked about Moses. And if you read this 
this 2 Corinthians chapter 3, above this, it talks about the administration, amen, that was glorious in Moses' day. And it says if that administration was glorious, how much more glorious is this administration going to be? Because that administration was a administration of condemnation. It was the law. All it did was show you where you was wrong. And all it did was point out where you came up short. But the administration of the Spirit is going to show you law, amen, and give you power to live. Amen. amen. So he says, now the Lord is that Spirit, amen? Because now we are talking about the Spirit of glory. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and what? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Oh, God, tell somebody I'm free to give God prayer. Don't you look at me funny. I say hallelujah right now. Don't you look at me funny. We are in a free place. Amen. Any church that won't let the Spirit of the Lord move, get out of it. Amen. Any church that won't let God have his way, get out of it. But if you want to shout, shout. If you want to run, run. If you want to do a dance, get up and dance right now. Amen. Y'all ain't saying that. This is a free place. Amen. Amen. We free in here. We are not bound. Amen. Amen. What the Spirit of the Lord is, that is liberty. You know some people tell you, oh, we don't do that here. Amen. Hey, hold on. Don't shout right now. Amen. Let be quiet while they sing it. If you want to sing, sing with them. You ain't saying nothing to me. If you want to wave your hand, wave them. I mean, even the rappers will tell you, wave them in the air like they just don't care. Yes. I want to be changed into what I'm looking at. 
I want to be changed into what I'm beholding. Yes. Amen. I'm seeing the splendor, the majesty, the yes. beauty of the Lord, yes. the gentleness of the Lord. I'm yes. seeing the intellect of the Lord. Yes. I want to be changed into that. Yes. Hello? Can I tell you that God can make you intellectual and you ain't got to go to school to get a degree? Amen. Am I telling you not to go to school? No. Go and get as much education as you can get. Take it to the highest level. But, amen, your intellect has nothing to do with your education. Hello? I know the founding pastor, bishop of the church that, that I came through, I, I, he was dead when I, when I came. His name was Bishop Hancock. Mm -hmm. He, I think he had an eighth grade education. Might not have been that much. But he got saved and he got into God. Uh -huh. mm. And that man was anointed. Yeah. Amen. 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 Raised from, from the day he laid hands on the sick. Amen. He had mega church in the 30s and the 40s. My Lord. He had grocery stores. He fed neighborhoods. Wow. Hello? Amen. He was a pioneer. Amen. Amen. And a student came to him with an algebra problem. Mm -hmm. And he took apples, oranges, and bananas and solved his algebra problem. Amen. 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 It had nothing to do with education. Amen. He only went to the eighth grade, if not more. Amen. What it was is he tapped into God. Amen. 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 And see, when you tap into God, God will release on you Amen. the things that he knows. Amen. And it ain't nothing that he don't know. Amen. Amen. Did you hear, you know, we say omniscient? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Those are two words, omni yeah. and science. He knows all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. He knows all of it. Mm -hmm. But we with open face, beholding us in the glass, stand up with me, the glory of the Lord. Yeah. I changed to that same image from glory to glory. To glory. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Even by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Just like I want residual glory. I want the presence of the Lord to rest on me. Amen. Amen. So, so that even when I leave, people are still saying, what is it about this day? What is it about this life? Amen. Say, mm, I can't wait till I talk to him again. Amen. Have you ever talked to somebody and the conversation you had was so enriching that you left just high and getting Amen. Like, oh my God. Amen. That was good. Mm -hmm. Bible study. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> she plugged it. She's plugged it. Amen. I was in Italy one time on the bus. And we were riding. And this lady was a college professor. She was, she was an Italian college professor. And myself and Sister Bell and her, we began to have a conversation. We're just talking about simple things and it got a little bit deeper. And then the lady just opened her life. Told me about her husband and told me about this and told me about that. And I said, oh God, I'm on vacation. I don't want to minister. <laughs> I started ministering to her. She says, oh, I am so grateful you come to my country. She says, I love talking to intelligent people. She says, because I've been with a bunch of dummies all day. <laughs> and she pointed to her lines. I said, I was blind. Oh, my God. <laughs> she says, I hope you come back. That's the impression you want to leave on people. Amen. Amen. That they hope you come back. Amen. You might not know him. You just ran into him in, in Panera Bread. You just trying to get a front chicken chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you might not even know him. But they're glad to see you. Amen. Sometimes when I go through McDonald's to get my oatmeal, there's a Hispanic lady. When I pull up, a whole continent's changed. Hey, my friend, how are you? You good? That's good. Just come around. I'm going to take care of you. So I come around. She tell me it's $100. I say, that ain't $100. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you doing good? Good to see you. Yeah. I say, yeah. I say, you have a blessed day. It's so pleasant. Because even though we have never just talked about God, she has identified that there is a virtue. Amen. Amen. 
that's on this person. Amen. Amen. And when you run into that kind of stuff, you want to see it again because, boy, you're dealing with all these other folks. Amen. Right? Amen. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Uh, you know, these other folks. Uh, everybody in the store got an attitude. The cash register got an attitude. The cashier. The people backing up your grocery got an attitude. Hello? I order my food. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Hello? Amen. And when people can behold virtue, people can behold that glory. You all the time can't tell them what it is, but God might give you opportunity. Amen. Amen. And when he gives you opportunity, Amen. go up and share. Amen. Amen. Tell them. Amen. Tell them. That's right. Tell them. Tell them. How do you think people want to come to church with you? Amen. It's evident that they see something. Amen. It's evident that they've been affected by something. Yes. It's evident that you've left some residue Amen. on them. Yes. Amen. Hello? Amen. What makes other people want to go tell people, hey, you ought to come to this church with me? Amen. Because Amen. it's residue in here. Amen. I want it to rub off on me. I want it to rub off on me. I want it to rub off on me. Hello? Amen. I, I, I know. I want to go a little bit. Just pray for me. Pray bless him. But I have prided myself Amen. on affecting people's lives. Yes. Amen. I have prided myself on leaving people better than they were yes. Yes. before Amen. they had come. Amen. Amen. Never want to hurt anyone. Amen. Never want to play anybody down. Amen. Never want to down, look down on nobody. Because we look good now. But we didn't always look good. Amen. Thank you this morning. We love you this morning. 